This presentation is called Exercise Classification for the Baseball Pitcher. Uh, my name is Greg Robbins, and I'm doing this today for Juggernaut Training Systems. It's important to note that the classifications are for the pitcher, not the position player. Uh, the pitcher serves one main purpose, and that's to deliver the ball over the plate from a mound. Position players will serve many purposes, including hitting and running in addition to throwing. So moving forward, I apologize in advance for any generalizations that take place in this article or this discussion as it may be. Uh, there are quite a lot and my aim is mainly to just shed some light on choosing exercises for baseball pitchers and also kind of the painting the picture as a whole and, and what the physical preparation of a baseball pitcher is like. Uh, in order to do this, other concepts may need to be brought up and I'm probably not going into enough depth to do any of these things justice, but it will kind of give you, like I said, that overall perspective of what you're dealing with in training a baseball pitcher. From there, we can present some questions and, and go in depth in other presentations or articles. The physical preparation of the baseball pitcher is widely misunderstood, and therefore it is very misdirected. Uh, that's probably the case with many sports as there seems to be a disregard for the actual demands of the sport and in this case a disregard for the demands of throwing a baseball. Not only what it takes to throw a baseball at the velocity needed to play at the highest level and also what throwing a baseball at that velocity does to your joints and soft tissue and how you can have a negative impact as a preparation coach if you don't know what those implications are. Uh, the physical preparation of a baseball player is trivial as it presents a few key attributes that make it very different from other team sports. So looking at some of those, a baseball player's success is far more dependent on their inherited physical traits, the development of their skills, and the mastery of the sport and how to play the sport. Uh, it's a very skill-dependent game, a very strategic game, and a high level of physical preparation is definitely not a prerequisite for being at the top level of baseball. You can think of plenty of guys who have made it to the top whose actual physical preparation was very low. That being said, physical preparation does have an important role in baseball if it's done correctly. There is a delicate balance between physical preparation means having a positive or negative impact on the baseball player's performance. Where I'm going with this mostly has to do with understanding the implications of what throwing a baseball does to the joint and soft tissue of the body and making sure that the exercise or movements that you use do not add more insult to injury basically they're gonna be spending a lot of time doing a certain motion and if you're choosing exercises that just reinforce that too much then you're not gonna set them up for success over the long competitive season um, there's also a delicate balance of what physical preparation means are so Physical preparation does not just mean lifting weight. There needs to be a balance between getting stronger and also making sure that you take care of things like maintaining range of motion or soft tissue quality. If those things aren't brought up to speed with what you're adding uh, from a strength standpoint or a, uh, a muscle size standpoint, then you're going to get injuries. Uh, depending on the age of the baseball player uh, and where they are in their physical preparation, your training as a coach for them can serve a, a very different purpose. So are we preparing them to sustain a level of performance, repeat a level of performance more consistently, or are the training means geared towards actually improving the on-field performance? So the way you approach training someone who's already playing at the highest level and someone who is just in the beginning stages of their baseball career are very different. Like I said, physical preparation is not necessarily a predeterminer of success in baseball. In many cases, 
physical preparation is a way to just add to the longevity of an already successful baseball career. So classifying exercises. What is an exercise? Uh, an exercise is basically just a movement. So it could be your, you know, like a squat or a deadlift or something that you do in the gym. But an exercise is also, in many ways, is the, comp the competitive exercise in this case is throwing. So when we're classifying exercises in this case, we're not just talking about things that you can do in the gym. We're talking about movements. Um, the direction of training transfer is the training moving us in a positive, negative, or indifferent direction. So what we are doing in training, is it helping us, is it hurting us, or is it doing neither, or is it kind of maintaining? So in terms of throwing a baseball, there may be no means that cause a very direct transfer. Throwing a baseball is the highest velocity movement in all of sports. And the higher the velocity of the movement, the harder it is to find an exercise that actually has very direct transfer to that competitive exercise. Um, there may, however, be general means that seem to give the perception of having a very direct transfer due to the fact that baseball pitchers are grossly underprepared physically. So it's not uncommon for a baseball pitcher uh, to begin doing just basic general preparation and all of a sudden elevate their velocity off the mound quite a bit. And it's not because there was necessarily a very direct transfer from those basic general preparation means to the baseball, but their weakest link was their general preparation. And by adding there, it did enhance uh, the specific qualities that they needed to throw that baseball. So it gave the appearance of being a very direct relation, but really it was just a gleaming deficiency that you brought up. General or general preparatory exercises um, typically refer to those exercises that are used for conditioning but do not have a direct correlation to the improvement of the sports skill or sport event, except in low-level athletes. So, like I said, adding uh, limit strength or maximal strength to a baseball pitcher does not have a direct correlation to the improvement of the sports skill. It doesn't do anything for the mix of delivering the baseball off a mound to the plate at that high of a velocity. However, even the professional athlete can be considered a low-level athlete in terms of their physical preparation. And in the case of baseball pitchers, this is probably where you're going to find the most of those high-skill, lowly, low physically prepared athletes. So, in their case, these exercises do seem to have a lot of transfer to the sports skill. In the case of throwing a baseball, like I said, um, virtually all traditional free weight, body weight, and cable based movements are going to be considered general preparation means. So we're talking barbell exercises, your squats, deadlifts, supine bridges, actually loaded single legs, exercises, rowing variations, dumbbell exercises, again, squat, deadlift, lunge, horizontal press, horizontal rowing variation, your cable exercises, same things, push-ups, inverted rows, chin-ups, lunge variations, all these basic gym-based movements, traditional strength training exercises will fit into the general or general preparatory exercise category and they're gonna make up a large base of what you're gonna do with baseball pitchers and I'll get into more of that later but I think it's also important to note that a lot of the kind of arm care exercise things that you do with baseball pitchers are also technically probably more general preparatory exercises. So your scapular humeral movement education drills like prone trap raises, prone abductions, external rotations, external rotation variations, these aren't happening at nearly the velocity uh, that, that they're happening throwing a baseball. Not even close. So 
while these while you might walk in and, and see a baseball pitcher doing these drills and say, oh, that's very specific to baseball, it's very specific general preparatory exercise. It is not a specific a specialized exercise in the sense that it doesn't have a ton of transfer directly to throwing a baseball, but it is a great choice for the the general preparation of a baseball player where it might not be the greatest choice for the general preparation of, say, a hockey player who is going to do nothing over their head. Um, I would also categorize any sagittal, place, sagittal plane base jumping into this category, so vertical jumps, box jumps, broad jumps, uh, single leg jump variations in the sagittal plane, um, and any linear speed type sprint variations, uh, including one to be uh, begin from a, a side start. There has been, it has been shown that sagittal power has very little transfer to actually throwing a baseball harder off of a mound. Um, your lateral power development has much greater transfer than uh, the sagittal plane base movement. So I think they're, they're still important in this general category, but I would not where you might put stuff like this into more of a uh, specialized exercise category for other sports uh, is not the case for throwing a baseball. So moving forward, um, special, specialized preparatory exercises. These exercises, as the general preparatory exercises, do not repeat the competitive actions as a whole or in their separate parts. However, they use similar muscle groups in their execution. The training work serves to activate the functions and body systems from which an increase in results in the main movement depend. Identical or close to identical regimes of muscle work and different functions of other systems are involved. So, in the case of throwing a baseball, this is probably the absolute extent that a gym-based exercise will ever be in terms of being baseball throwing specific. We'll make a case for some options coming up, but like I said, it's a, such a high-velocity movement that get specialized movement to mimic it and have some kind of transfer towards throwing the baseball is going to be very difficult if it's possible at all. Um, due to the high velocity of the arm action associated with throwing, most of the exercises that I'm going to choose deal mainly with the lower body and the trunk and the cooperation, co uh, cooperation of the two. So I don't think that you're ever going to really be able to get any kind of specialized exercise for the arm action associated with throwing a baseball. Instead, I think you can focus in on what the lower body is doing and how it's cooperating with the trunk and you can mimic some of that uh, with with exercises in the in the gym in the preparation process so lateral power development things like skater jumps and all those different variations I think they could fit into this category uh, they have been shown to have some more direct and positive correlation with uh, throwing velocity medicine ball work uh, rotational and overhead variations I wouldn't do these too heavy with uh, baseball players. We usually stick within the 4 to 12 pound range with the medicine ball work that we do. Um, again, we're talking about a high velocity movement. And if you're going to be more uh, specific to, to that, you can't go too heavy with the medicine ball work. Single leg landings, one to consider as well in this category that they... Single leg stability and the absorption of force is a big part of throwing off the mound. You're going to be pushing off that back leg and landing on the, the front leg and having to really be able to stick that landing and decelerate a whole bunch of body mass being thrown forward. Uh, so it would be more specific like into on the front leg, but in the case of uh, just a specialized preparatory exercise, uh, I think you could do single leg landings for both legs, uh, including box jumps with single leg landings and medial lateral hurdle hop variations. The last category I'm going to use is specialized developmental exercises. These are exercises 
that repeat the competitive exercise in separate parts. In executing them, one in the same muscle groups participate together with activation of similar muscle systems and organs. More or less recreate all the elements of the competitive activity and in, doing, and in so doing make it possible to more effectively and selectively have an effect on improving or developing the same or other physical abilities. So, as I said before, I'm not sure that you can recreate any part of delivery at the same velocity that it's taking place in competition. But again, I think it's interesting to see if maybe we could recreate some of these movements for the lower body. For example, the back leg, the lateral push off the mound, I think that you can get creative and come up with some very close variations of that, including just working on more powerful pushes off the mound. So basically taking a skater jump and actually doing it with a slight descent and, and working the, on the, the power of that back leg pu uh, pushing off. From the front or the plant leg standpoint, single leg la landings in external rotation be a uh, specialized developmental exercise. It's important that when you land, in this case, that you are actually landing with that front foot pointing forward and being able to absorb that force and decelerate the whole body. If you look at the delivery, a lot of times when that plant leg, that plant foot hits the base of the mound, the front leg or the front knee will extend pretty forcefully. So I think there's a case for also doing single leg landings in external rotation with an immediate jump or an immediate knee extension to work on that the powerful extension of the front leg. I would also put organized throwing programs into this category. And, and that might be misadvised to some people. Um, but again, you're not going to be able to really recreate the velocity of throwing with any other size except for throwing. So while throwing the baseball is in fact the competitive exercise, I think, to be more specific, the competitive exercise is throwing the baseball off of a mound within a certain strike zone with a batter. So long toss, essentially just throwing the ball different lengths, to me is a specialized developmental exercise. Um, and if it's organized intelligently, it could probably be one of the best ways to really work on improved arm strength. To kind of wrap this whole discussion up and try to keep this under 20 minutes, there's a caveat to this whole discussion. Baseball has the shortest offseason of any team sport and the longest competitive season. In some cases, it's a competitive season that never ends. So when you're training a baseball player and you look back at these categories, things change quite a bit. You have to remember that the stress they're putting on their joints and their soft tissue it can't be accentuated during the training process. In fact, it needs to in some ways be alleviated. So when you're choosing different exercises, you have to flirt with that hard line of being too specific. They've done so many repetitions through that same range of motion, through that same action of the hips into the torso, into the arm, that if you recreate that too often in a preparatory setting, then you might set them up short term for some pretty big gains but long term you're setting them up to fail because they're just going to wear down and they're just going to break down so you need to look at the preparation of a baseball player more on, on a, a long term basis both the the long season and the career and make sure that the things that you're doing in the gym are setting them up for success in the future and so while we talk about general and specific means sometimes you have to be this makes sense specific with your general means so you have to choose exercises that from a transferring stamp training transfer standpoint are general but from a sport standpoint are more specific so you can't do for example everyone asks why we don't bench press barbell bench press our throwers too often well Doing a barbell bench press puts the shoulder in a very similar position that it does when it's throwing a baseball. 
and there's no necessarily gain from being a better bench presser to throwing a baseball. So all we're seeing at that exercise is that we're spending more time putting on the front of the shoulder, and we're not really getting much of any gain from it. So while, yes, it's a general exercise, it's not specific to becoming a better baseball player. You're much better off doing push-ups or landmine presses or dumbbell work than you are using the barbell. Same reason we don't back squat pictures. Again, you're putting them into that externally rotated position, putting a lot of stress on the front of the shoulder that's already taken a lot of stress all season long. And while the squat's a great exercise, the back squat probably isn't going to give you any more benefit than a front squat or using a safety squat bar or a giant camber bar. So there's really no point in using it. So specificity needs to be gauged by more than just the correlation to a positive training outcome in the short term, but also in the term of the entire season and career of the baseball player. I want to thank you guys for listening to this and reading through the notes that I gave you. I hope this sheds some light on how we train baseball players and, and why you might choose different exercises. And please check out my website, thestrengthhouse.com, also uh, crisisperformance.com, and Elite Baseball Mentorships, which are three-day long seminars that are run by Eric Cressy, uh, Eric Schoenberg, and Mike that shed some really great light on the demands of throwing a baseball and how to train for them. So I think if you're working with baseball players, I would really check out that Elite Baseball Mentorships program, and I would also uh, follow our pitching coordinator, Matt Blake, on Twitter. Uh, he's an excellent source of information to help you understand what the demands of throwing a baseball are, both in breaking down the mechanics of it and understanding different velocities and movements that are taking place when throwing a baseball. Until you kind of understand what's going on there, it's going to be really hard for you to uh, prepare a baseball player accordingly. Thanks again for listening.